Hi 360. So we're back again and we're going to read another chapter of George's Marvelous Medicine. This chapter is called Mr. Cranky's Great Idea. So let's get started. It says, Mr. Cranky's Great Idea. The next day, George's father came down to breakfast in a state of greater excitement than ever. I have been awake all night thinking about it, he cried. About what, Dad? George asked. About your marvelous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, my boy. We must start making more of it at once. More and more and more. The giant stewing pot had been completely emptied the day before because there had been so many sheep and pigs and cows and bullocks to be dosed. But why do we need more, Dad? George asked. We've done all our own animals and we made Grandma feel as frisky as a ferret, even though she has had to sleep in the barn. My dear boy, Mr. Killy Cranky said, we need barrels and barrels of it, tons and tons. Then we will sell it to every farmer in the world so that all of them can have giant animals. We will build a marvelous medicine factory and sell the stuff in bottles at $10 a piece. We will become rich and you will be famous. But wait a minute, Dad, George said. There's no waiting, cried Mr. Kinky, working himself up so much he put butter in his coffee and milk in his toast. Do you understand what this tremendous invention of yours is going to do to the world? Nobody will ever go hungry again. Why won't they, asked George. Because one giant cow will give 50 buckets of milk a day, cried Mr. Kinky, waving his arms. One giant chicken will make a 100 fried chicken dinners, and one giant pig will give you a 1,000 pork chops. It's tremendous, my dear boy. It's fantastic. It will change the world. But wait a minute, Dad. George said again. Don't keep saying wait a minute, shouted Mr. Cranky. There isn't a minute to wait. We must get cracking at once. Do calm down, my dear, Mrs. Kinky said from the other end of the table, and stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. To the heck with my cornflakes, cried Mr. Kinky, leaving from his chair. Come on, George, let's get going. And the first thing we're going to do is make more, one more stew pot full as a tester. But Dad, said little George, the trouble is there will be there won't be any trouble, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky. We can't how can possibly there be any trouble? All you got to do is put the same stuff into the pot as you did yesterday. And while you're doing it, I'll write down each and every step. That's how we'll get the magic recipe. But Dad, George said, please listen to me. Why don't you listen to him, Mr. Kanky, Mrs. Kinky said. The boy is trying to tell you something. For Mr. Cranky was too excited to listen to anyone except himself. And then he cried, when the new mixture is ready, we'll test it out on the old hen just to make sure we've got it right. And after that, we'll all shout hooray and build the giant factory. But dad, come on then. What is it you want to say? I can't possibly remember all the hundreds of things I put into the pot to make medicine, George said. Of course you can, my dear boy, cried Mr. Cranky. I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. You'll get it in the end. You'll see if you don't. Now then, what was the first thing you put in? I went up to the bathroom first, George said. I used a lot of things in the bathroom and on Mommy's dressing table. Come on then, cried Mr. Cranky. Up we go to the bathroom. When we got there, we found, of course, a whole lot of empty tubes and empty aerosol cans and empty bottles. That's great, said Mr. Cranky. This tells us exactly what you used. If anything is empty, it means you used it. So Mr. Cranky started making a list of everything that was empty in the bathroom. Then they went into Mrs. Cranky's dressing table. A box of powder, said Mr. Cranky, writing it down. Helga's hair set. Flowers of turnips perfume. Terrific. This is going to be easy. Where did you go next? To the laundry room, George said. But are you sure you haven't missed anything up here, Dad? That's up to you, my boy, Mr. Cranky said. Have I? I don't think so, George said. So down they went to the laundry room. And once again, Mr. Cranky wrote down the names of all the empty bottles and cans. My goodness me, what a mass of stuff you use, he cried. 
No wonder it did magic things. Is that the lot? No, Dad, it's not, George said, and he led his father out to the shed where the animal medicines were kept and showed him the five big empty bottles up on the shelf. Mr. Cranky wrote down all their names. Anything else? Mr. Cranky asked. Little George scratched his head and thought and thought, but he couldn't remember putting anything else in. Mr. Killy Cranky leapt up into his car and drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans of everything on his list. Then he went to the vet and got fresh supplies of all the animal medicines George had used. Now show me how you did it, George, he said. Come along, show me exactly how you mixed them all together. Hmm. Okay. So let's see what happens next. Let's see if he can remember how he put everything together. 